What I just love about the theme throughout this entire book is he is not after behavior modification. It's not about what we do, but it is truly heart transformation, which will lead to life transformation. Transformation is not by our own performance or efforts, but truly by beholding and seeing our Jesus in the Word of God. Hello everyone and welcome to our book club and today we are going to be walking through, continue to walk through Pastor Joseph Prince's book, Destined to Reign. And I don't know how maybe you found yourself here with us today. Uh, maybe you have been following Pastor Prince's teachings for years and years and you've been counting down the days until our next book club release. Or maybe you are hearing us because you left YouTube on and we just popped up on your algorithm. But either way, I believe that the Lord has brought you here because he wants to speak something special to your heart today. And Destined to Rain was picked out for this book club because it is such an amazing, revolutionary book. And it has touched the lives of so many people across the world and truly changed the way that they live their lives and what they believe about the Lord. And even though it was released in 2007, there are still to this day testimonies coming out of um, restoration in people's families, freedom from all kinds of addiction, and most of all that people are catching the Lord's heart, the Father's heart for them personally. So as you see here, we are actually going through the 15th anniversary edition of Destined to Rain. And this one is very special because there are so many added features into this edition. So they are at the end of every chapter, there are reflections and thoughts from Pastor Prince himself just on 15 years later, um, walking through this book. And there are also QR codes throughout the chapters that will lead you to different testimony videos and will also lead you to different um, preaching and teaching moments from Pastor Prince, which happens to be my personal favorite part of this edition of this book, because in certain chapters, you're like, oh man, I wish I could just kind of dive a little bit deeper into that. And you can scan that QR code and it'll bring you to a teaching moment or a preaching moment from Pastor Prince. So it's a really awesome feature that they've added in there. And if you do not have this edition of the book, we would love to gift one to you. So if you are within the United States, you just have to click the QR code or the link that's on your screen right now. And we would love to just send you a copy. All you have to do is pay the shipping and the handling for that. And then if you're outside of the US, you can click the QR code on the screen and we can send you a digital copy. Um, so before we go any further tonight, I just wanna welcome everyone that is joining us live tonight. And also, um, of course, welcome Pastor Darren and Deaconess Jess all the way from Singapore. Singapore, represent. Yeah. <laughs> and also this awesome guy right next to me, my husband. How you doing? Pastor Josh. It's good to see you. It's Pastor Josh. It's good yes. to be here. Um, I love these book clubs. Mm -hmm. I love doing this. Diving into this book is amazing. We've done it three times now. This is our fourth time with Destined Terrain. Yep. And again, I don't think we can emphasize this enough is uh, this 15 year anniversary edition is very special. If you have not read it, this is your opportunity to read this book. It will change your life because in it, it contains the truths about who Jesus is, the loveliness of his person, the perfection of his finished work, and all these other added features that Lindsay just mentioned. And also, you know, this book club has been a great blessing to us personally, all of us that are gathered together right now, right? But this is way too good to keep to ourselves. We, we can't keep this to ourselves. And we wanted to make this real easy for everybody to give it away, this book club, these episodes, these conversations. And the way that we can do that best, we made this real easy for you, is everyone's on YouTube already, right? Most of you, right? Most of you are on YouTube. You have found yourself watching uh you know a short or a video and some of us have gotten uh distracted and gone down a path of you know one short after the next but guess what um if the enemy tries to use youtube to distract us we can use his own like goliath sword david took it from him and actually defeated goliath with his own sword so i just see it as that as the lord also wants to use youtube to attract us 
to his love and his grace and his mercy. And with that, we want to encourage you, go to our YouTube playlist. We have a YouTube playlist carefully curated just for you with all the book club episodes. And you can go there and you can enjoy it for yourself, but also extend it to others because it's such an easy way to invite people into the conversation and what we've been diving into. And for this book club, we're actually going through Destined to Rain chapters 15 through 18. And it's going to be a enjoyable, wild adventure getting to know Jesus more and more together. And that's how it works best. Pastor Darren, Deaconess Jess, Lindsay, all of you that are gathered, we get to understand who Jesus is through hanging out with Jesus and his family. And that's what we're doing. We're hanging out with the Lord Jesus and his family, all of you, all of us right now. And that causes us to see all these beautiful aspects of his person. Also, real quick, before we get started, is there study notes that are available also on our website? And there's reflection questions. And there's just opportunities for you to journal, for you to meditate. And this is, this is what all these digital means are really for. It's to help you meditate on God's word, meditate on the right now thing that we feel like as we're going through this book, the Lord may be emphasizing to you um, so that you can pair the word with your practical everyday experiences in life. And so go to our website also, check out all the resources we have made available there. And I really believe that it will cause you to reap a harvest of righteousness, peace, and joy. So we're excited for this. Pastor Darren, you got something to share? Yeah, just so excited to be part of this. And I don't know about you, but you know, most times people do book clubs like this so that they can sell more books. But we're actually doing this book club so that we can give away more of this book completely free, right? So I think we, we are committed to, to this mission of seeing you know, everything that the Lord has put in our, in our pastor's heart and get it like disseminated, get it distributed. So while you're watching this, wherever you are, like get, get on board and find a way to participate, right? Because you can order this in America, just like Lindsay shared, just shipping and handling, and we'll get the book to you. And around the world, completely free, you can get the digital edition of this resource. So that's the unique thing about this book club. I mean, we're so committed to figuring out how do we advance the gospel of grace. But we can't do it by ourselves. Because there are people that, Deaconess Jessica, Pastor Josh, Lindsay, and myself, that we can't reach. But there's so many people in your world. There's so many loved ones and relatives and, and families and we're just like found all these ways to make it super simple, super cost efficient for you to get this book to them, right? And after they've got, gotten this book, you can point them then to this series of uh, book club recordings that we are we're putting together and I put together completely free on YouTube so that they're not actually feeling like they're reading like this book completely alone, but they could read a couple of chapters and then jump into YouTube, jump into our YouTube channel and participate as part of this beautiful uh, community, right? Across America. I think wherever you're tuning in right now, you know, we always love for you to put it in the chat, whether you're watching live right now, you know, put it in the chat, whether you're watching this after a GRC online service, put it in the chat. We always like for all of us to be able to see like where everyone's tuning in from, the city that you're in, you know, where do you represent? And even on, on, on YouTube, like I was just looking at this, this comment came in on our YouTube channel nine days ago. And, and this precious person says, thank you, Pastor Prince for writing Destined to Rain. This is my second time participating in the book club. The first time was the first time it was at online. And all I could do was cry throughout the whole book club because the presence of Jesus and his love. And I can't wait for the next one. Blessings to you all. So I, I, you know, I, I think, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to go to YouTube and see the comments of like where people are tuning in from, right? We, we get, you know, quite a bit of views, but it's always nice for us to kind of understand like uh, where you watching this from so that we can, you know, continue to pray for you, pray for your nation, pray for your city, Right, Josh, I see all these cities being listed on our live chat right now. Do you like to just call out some of them? We got Colorado Springs. Shout out to Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, we got people from Ohio. We got people from all over America watching right now. Washington, I mean, from one coast to the other. Rhode Island, 
um, North Carolina, Idaho, Wisconsin, Texas. Shout out to Texas. Alaska, <laughs> the Northern Lights. Um, I'm jealous. Uh, we're just so thankful everyone's joining us. This is incredible. Across time and space, right, Dignus Jessica, we are able to come together, you know, with our uh, Hollahan family, GRC family in Dallas, you know, everyone across America and beyond. Because if you look at the YouTube channel, people are tuning in from pretty much er everywhere. Right, Jess? Yeah, absolutely. And it's always such a pleasure and privilege for us to just come together as, you know, the family here and um, GRC online and get to see everyone and just be able to talk about Jesus. Isn't that like, you know, we, we don't want the sessions of the times to end, right? When we talk about Jesus. And yes, thank you, Pastor Darren, Pastor Josh and Lindsay. Um, you know, I am just so excited that I get to kick this uh, book club off today because, um, you know, when when I'm I was preparing it, I felt like the road to Emmaus. We all know it's the warm bath, right? That the the two disciples experienced, and it's it's there. It's the greatest Bible study that Pastor Prince himself says that he would want to have you know assess into because that was where Jesus expounded everything about himself from the scriptures. But as I was just looking at this road to Emmaus and trying to just picture um you know Mr. Cleopas and perhaps his wife or another disciple as they were take on that road to Emmaus they were dejected they were discouraged you know like many of us in certain seasons of our lives will be um and they were probably you know had their heads hanging down and they were walking in a slow manner probably on this road and then I, I saw this picture of Jesus, you know, just come, come coming alongside them and joining them. And the word that came up was romance. You know that our Lord is so romantic because he loves us so and he wants that relationship with us, right? It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with our Savior. And he himself comes to take that, get that relationship with us. And, you know, walking alongside us, as he did with the disciples, knowing what they were feeling, like Jesus knows how we feel. You know, he's never like, um, oh, I didn't know you were feeling this way, you know, but he knows, right? And he came alongside them and he actually restrained them from seeing who he is until he was in a, a place where he could expound the scriptures to them concerning himself. And I thought that, you know, it reminded me of like when Adam walked in the cool of the evening with the Lord. And I, I, I saw like, you know, pastors been encouraging us to, you know, take walks, right? Isn't it wonderful that when we take walks, that we are conscious that the Lord is walking with us, alongside us, and he knows every feeling that we are going through. And he's loving us and he's, you know, all, all ready to just pour out his love and his encouragement, his strength, his healing. And that's what he loves to do next to us, right? As he, we, we walk this road. Um, and the Emmaus Road, it's a daily you know, experience. It's not um, a journey that we take, but we are pilgrims in this world, right? And we're taking this journey and we need that good, our good shepherd to be able to walk this journey with us. And, and I just was so encouraged by that picture. And, you know, again, you know, it's like a visual aid for me that I want to be conscious and remind myself that this is the romance that I have with my Savior and Lord. As I was just, you know, contemplating on this journey and the Lord revealing himself, you know, I felt like the Lord say that truly he was there to give them grace and peace, right? And that's in 2 Peter 1, 2 to 4, how grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's 
really the inheritance that we have and past, what pastor has been preaching, you know, and what claim what is yours, right? It's the inheritance of the finished work of Jesus at the cross that has given us grace and peace, right? And the peace that surpasses all understanding. And I want that peace all the time, every moment, right? To be the guiding force for us. And that enables and empowers us to be an overcomer. And, you know, so I, I thought that, you know, the second point to, you know, what I wanted to share was really allowing the Lord, you know, as we see Jesus in the scriptures, as we see him in the word, we and, and his finished work, that we have grace and peace multiplied in our lives. And, you know, when in times of discouragement, it was beautiful in on the road to Emmaus in this, you know, narrative that we see in the Bible, in the word of God really there is a transformation that takes place that when we see Jesus 2 Corinthians 3:18 we're being transformed by beholding him right as by the spirit of the lord and from glory to glory into his image when we see Jesus in the word when we are on this road with the lord right this journey that he his love his heart for us is to transform us he loves us the way we are but he never, he loves us even more, not to leave us the way we are, but to transform us from glory to glory. It, it's effortless, right? Just like what Dustin Turain in the book, throughout the book, it is reminding us that transformation is not by our own performance or efforts, but truly by beholding and seeing our Jesus in the word of God. Amen. Amen. So. Amen. I just, you know, am thankful for even, you know, having this opportunity to share what the Lord has put on my heart. And I praise him. Amen. 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 So good. Deacon, it's just, we could tell that you were only encouraged a little bit by chapter 15. <laughs> um, and uh, can I just confess something to you, Deacon, it's just before I start, um, talking about chapter 16 because it says in the bible confess your sins one to another you're going to be healed i need some healing right now and i really wanted to do chapter 15 to be honest with you oh. um but you you jumped on it so quickly but uh that's okay um i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about chapter 16 that was absolutely so good and what i really enjoyed about what you just shared is that I can tell it went through your own spiritual digestive system and uh, you just like took it in for yourself personally. And then we're all beneficiaries of what you're making personal for yourself as you're reading this book, Destined Terrain. And I think it's so special to hear someone um, share what's blessing them out of truly being blessed by what they're reading. And that's what we're all after here is we, we just pray and hope that as we're going through this book that you know, you're being blessed personally, that as we're talking about what's blessing us, there's something that the Holy Spirit is highlighting uh, for you personally mm -hmm. to really digest and to like what Pastor Prince says, haga, which is the Hebrew word for meditate and mutter under your breath so that this truth of who Jesus is and what he did for us can grow the deepest roots in our heart. Just like scripture says, let, let your roots go deep into the love of God. And um, that brings me to chapter 16 that I, I got to read and I, I'd like to talk about. Um, still recovering from chapter 15. But, um, you know, chapter 16 is titled The Secret of David. And um, it's so beautiful to see that in chapter 16, where Pastor Prince, you know, he names it, you know, The Secret of David. It's so special because sometimes we would come to conclusions about what that secret is. And we would, you know, most times I think start focusing on behavior. Oh, David, his secret must be that he was really quick to repent or he behaved flawlessly. He had perfect behavior. Um, if you have read any bit of David's journey and story, you would know that he did not have flawless behavior. Quite the contrary, you know, he actually committed some pretty grave sin and fell into some pretty uh, difficult and tragic situations and circumstances. And the interesting thing is he was an Old Testament person or an Old Covenant person with a New Covenant mentality. Mm -hmm. And so Pastor Prince brings out, what is the secret of David? What, what really is this? And it's not that he behaved perfectly. 
How many are thankful for that? Can I just see a digital hand and a physical hand just be put up right now on the screen? We should all be putting up our hands and our feet. Um, <laughs> I'm very thankful that that's not what causes us to be a man or a woman after God's own heart. It's something else. It's not even that he was quick to repent, because if that was the case, there would be a lot of people that would carry that title in Scripture. So what is it? You know, Pastor Prince does such a good job in chapter 16. And what it is, is David had a heart for the ark. And so interesting. What is the ark a picture of? Now, just try to bear with me a little bit as I try to um, explain a little bit about how Pastor Prince took us through this journey in chapter 16 with even the 15 year anniversary edition an amazing sermon clip where he you actually get to see the ark on the platform with Pastor Prince preaching and him describing why the ark is actually an illustration of the person of Jesus and actually the mercy seat what that speaks of as well and so what is the ark a representation of the person of Jesus and the work he accomplished at the cross this is what made David a man after God's own heart is he prioritized the Ark of the Covenant. And it says in chapter 16, this is really interesting. Can I just read this for a minute? Psalm 132 it says, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. Surely I will not go into the chamber of my house or go up to the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Now, what stuck out to me about this is David did not separate his ability to rest outside of his relationship to the ark and the mercy seat. Now that is so amazing for you and me today because in the fullest expression of what we get to enjoy under the new covenant, we do not find our rest in all of our situations and all of our circumstances outside of our relationship with the ark, the true ark, which is Jesus and what he accomplished at the cross. And so Pastor Prince brings out what made David a man after God's own heart? He prioritized the presence of God. He prioritized even looking into the future. What's at the center of Daddy God's heart? The one who's in the bosom of the Father, who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And David somehow saw into the future, prioritized the ark, and said, I got to bring this back to Jerusalem. And you know what that resulted in? He was able to set it up in a tent and anyone was able to approach actually with singing and dancing and rejoicing and freedom. And I don't know about you, but we get to enjoy the fullest expression of that under the new covenant in every situation you're finding yourself in. What causes us to actually be a man or a woman after God's own heart? To see what's at the center of his heart. And what's at the center of his heart is the person of Jesus. Why? Because also what's at the center of his heart is for us to enjoy a free, undeserved, unearned, unmerited beautiful, intimate relationship with him through the work of Jesus that can absolutely not be interrupted by any of your sin. It's really important to see what have you placed at the center of your circumstance? Because when we talk about the center of God's heart or bringing Jesus back to center place, because that's what Pastor Prince talks about. He said his ministry is all about bringing Jesus back to center place. So who do you see at the center of your circumstance right now? This is like a reflective question I just wanted to propose to everyone. Is it yourself holding all things together, trying to hold the school together, trying to hold your career together? I like to look at it as like there's a hub in the middle and there's mm -hmm. spokes that go out to all these different areas of your life. Now the center holds the power to release life to each spoke. But if you're at the center of your life, and you think that it's up to you to see that spoke, that area of your job, that area of relationship with your spouse, the um, restoration of that relationship with your children, experience life with you at the center, we're going to experience a lack of life and we're going to be burnt out. We're going to be we're going to be performing and we're going to be striving to bring life to those different spokes. And that's going to end not so good. Mm -hmm. It's going to end in self-condemnation. But if we see Jesus in the midst, 
Jesus at the center. Now we're hitting God's heart. Mm -hmm. Now we're hitting the center of God's heart. Why is that at the center of his heart? Because God wants us to experience Zoe life. And the only way we can experience Zoe life is if we prioritize the Lord, our righteousness. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, our righteousness at the center of a situation will inevitably and effortlessly cause that spoke, that area, whatever it might be, to experience that life-giving force of the Spirit to testify to the wonder-working power of what Jesus accomplished for you and me and all of us at the cross. So I just want to encourage you guys with that is maybe to just have some self-reflective moments. We're not talking about um, self-occupation. That's something different. That leads to self-condemnation. We're talking about just reflecting on maybe in an area that you're very frustrated in at work right now, maybe you see yourself at the center. Maybe that's the issue. Self-centered is you think you hold the power to hold your life together. But David came to the conclusion, and you can see all through his journey, that he had a reliance and a dependence actually on God's mercy and his grace and his love, and that's where he found rest. So I just want to encourage all of you that Jesus is in the midst. When he's at the center, miracles happen. So I just feel like that's what really stuck out to me. And I'm so encouraged that you're a woman after God's own heart. I'm a man after God's own heart. All of us have that in Christ Jesus under the new covenant. So I'm just so excited about it. Yeah, I mean, you had a lot of amazing things to share for a chapter that you weren't so excited to do. Well, it's gotta be by the grace of God. Yeah, yeah. amen. And the cool part is um, that I get to share after he shares and that the revelation that he got was so similar to what I got. And we didn't even talk about what we were gonna share until this morning. So just so cool to see the Holy Spirit just kind of working and having that, that synergy you know I mean? there. It's really cool. So I was sharing from, or wanting to share from chapter 18, which is called The One Thing You Lack. And this chapter actually starts off with a question. And it says, are you struggling to live the Christian life today? And when I am reading books, especially when I'm reading this book, if, they, if he's asking a question, I wanna stop and pause and think about how I would answer that question. And when you do that, I feel like it just gives that moment to invite the Lord in, that you, you stop, you think about it, and then you pray and you say, Lord, I trust that as I continue to read, that you are going to impart to my heart exactly what you want me to catch as I continue reading. Um, so that's something that I try to do when I read, especially this book. So it says, are you struggling to live the Christian life today? So you pause, you ask yourself that question, you pray, you ask the Lord for that revelation, like what have I been struggling with? And Lord, can you help me to believe what you believe about this situation that you don't go like, Pastor Josh was sharing, you don't go into this place of, you know, crazy self-reflection that will lead to condemnation, that you quickly give it to the Lord and invite him into that situation. And more often than not, it's going to lead to repentance. And I know the word repentance can kind of be a heavy word for some people, um, depending on what their upbringing was and their background, that could be um, a little bit of a somber and heavy word. But mm -hmm. that word repentance just means to change your mind. And I love how Pastor Prince shared it in on page 262 of chapter 18. And it says, so let's be scriptural, my friend. It is not the preaching of wrath, fiery indignation, indignation and judgment that will cause people's hearts to turn back to God. It is his goodness, grace, and mercy. When you catch a glimpse of that, you cannot help but be overwhelmed by all that he is, and this will lead to true repentance. Let people come to church to enjoy God's goodness, because when they are impacted by his grace, repentance, holiness, and godliness will surely follow. In the same way that you cannot be under the sun without getting a tan, you cannot be under grace without becoming holy. So I just love that description mm. of what true repentance really means. And as I stopped and thought about that question in the beginning of the chapter, what is it that I struggle with in my Christian walk, in my you know walk with the Lord? And to be completely transparent, mine is that I put on myself a demand mentality just like Pastor Josh was just sharing about the hub and all the spokes, that a lot of times I see myself as that hub, especially in our home, 
that I have to be the one to buy the groceries, then to cook the food and feed the kids and do the laundry and do all the things and still be nice, which can be a lot if you're putting that on. <laughs> and still be nice. And still be nice <laughs> with a smile on my face. It could be a lot. But when I actually stopped and I thought about that answer, okay, Lord, this is what the demand that I'm putting on myself. I know it's not my family, it's not my husband, it's not my kids, it's not the people that I work with. I'm putting this demand on myself. So how can you help me in this area to see what you see? How can I believe what you are saying about this situation? And a lot of times I'll just go to the word and okay, Lord, this is where your truth is for me. This is what I need right now. Cause if I continue this way, I'm gonna fall down a rabbit hole of just, you know, taking it all on myself. and. What I will share when I am kind of in that mode to myself is Matthew 11, 28 and 29. And it's come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And I feel like that scripture verse right there is for moms everywhere. And it says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And when I kind of mutter those scriptures to myself, I am reminded how loved I am by the Lord, how good he is, and how much grace there is just flowing towards me that it can kind of cause me to take my eyes off of myself, off my situation, um, to take that demand off of myself and to put it on the Lord because he wants to take it. It says it right here in his word that, you know, to give to give it to him because he can handle it. His hands are bigger than ours. He's stronger than ours. And that's just his heart for us. And I feel like so often people are so focused on behavior. What am I doing? What am I not doing? Um, what should I be doing? And when you're focusing on all the behavior things, there is no power to change just by focusing on those things. The true power to change comes in seeing Jesus in his goodness and in his love for you and let him do the heavy lifting. And what I just love about the theme throughout this entire book is he is not after behavior modification. It's not about what we do, but it is truly heart transformation, which will lead to life transformation. And um, this chapter goes on to talk about the rich young ruler um, going to Jesus and also about Zacchaeus just receiving the Lord's love for him. So I encourage you just to keep reading on because it's mm -hmm. such a beautiful parallel picture of focusing on yourself and your own works and then allowing the Lord to just pour his grace and his love into your situation and the transformation that can come from those things. Even if you have read Destined to Reign before, can I encourage you to get hold of this 15th anniversary edition and receive these life-changing truths afresh? This special edition includes some new material, some of my reflections, personal notes, and new meditations as I read Destined to Reign again. There are also some additional content like teaching clips and specially selected video testimonies to encourage you and help you get the most out of the book. And if you know a friend or loved one who needs to hear the gospel of grace, please consider sending them a copy of this book as well. God bless you. Even as you are tuning in today, I appreciate you for taking time. You could be doing something else, right? We acknowledge that and recognize, but the fact that you are watching this right now, I, I believe that this is a special divine appointment because we may not be speaking specifically into what you are dealing with at home and in your family and in your life situation. But I, I truly believe this from, you know, what I've learned from pastor is somehow when we talk about the person of Jesus, he touches you in your area of need. When we bring the shepherd into the forefront, he brings a anointing of shepherding to your area of want, adversity, challenge, lack, whatever it is, like the shepherding anointing is present and it is here. You know, as I reflect back on, you know, my journey in this house, you know, being part of pastor's ministry in 2024 right now, I've, I've actually been part of New Creation Church now for 28 years. So this is four cycles of seven, 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 seven. Did I get the math right? <laughs> I, I majored in English literature in at college, so... Right, pardon me if I didn't get the math right, but twenty-eight years is it's significant because it's uh four cycles of seven, and you know as I meditate on 
the scripture in the road to Emmaus, which is Luke chapter 4, verse 32, you know, the, the, the disciples spoke to each other, right? The two that Jesus was speaking to, right? At the end of this, you know, whole interaction with the Lord, they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Did not our hearts burn when Jesus was speaking and he opened the scriptures to us, you know, and I, and I asked myself, like, I've been part of the church, part of pastor's ministry now for 28 years, and I desire for my heart to still be ignited and burning. Because I come to church and I come to, you know, care group and I come to book club, not to acquire more knowledge. And I pray that that's not your intent as well. Because there's so much content on YouTube and so many experts and gurus that want to tell us uh, what to do, you know. But my pursuit, and I pray that your pursuit as well, it's not the pursuit of knowledge, but yeah. the pursuit of Jesus. And I don't think it's a feeling, Josh and Lindsay and Jess. Like, I don't think it's a feeling that their hearts burn. I don't think it's just a, I think it's a supernatural occurrence. It's not a feeling of your heart burning. I'm talking about something supernatural. I'm talking about a fire that comes from heaven. That when you contemplate and hear about the person of Jesus, something supernatural occurs. And when scripture that is centered upon, upon the person of Jesus, right? Not in the law, right? The letter that kills, but the spirit that gives life. That even as you hear about the Jesus that we're talking about, the finished work of Christ, the completion of all that was done at the cross. Like we have that knowledge that it occurred and it is real, however long you've been a believer. But to partake of that afresh, that makes all the difference. Where hate knowledge is insufficient and you want your heart to be ignited with a fire from heaven. That's the revival that we're after. I'm not in, you know, excited about you know, just content there are a lot of content creators in the world today, right? Trying to be an influencer and influence you to purchase this, to live this way, to plan your retirement this way, to deploy your capital that way, to, to get rich quick this way, to make you feel like you're missing out on this, that, and every opportunity. That is abundant. It's abundant on TV. It's abundant on the news. It's abundant on current affairs. It's abundant everywhere. But partaking of all that knowledge just causes us to be in a place of more worry, more anxiety, more feelings of like we're missing out, we're not living our best life, someone else is doing better than us, someone else on social media is doing better than us, someone has a better vacation, someone has a better watch, someone has a better house, someone has a better car, someone has a better job, someone has a better career, someone has better kids, you know, someone has a better grandkids you know, better husband, better wife, like it causes all that knowledge brings a lot of pain and suffering. So when you contemplate this story, right? Disciples were walking, they began this depressive walk. Why? Because all they had was knowledge and even their knowledge was imprecise. Because when I look at this scripture again, if you look at Luke chapter uh, 24 verse 19, they, they described to Jesus, Jesus asked them like, why, why are you sad? And then the, the disciples said to him like, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which has happened in these days? And then he said to them like, what things? Right? Jesus said to them, what things? So these two disciples described to Jesus and they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet. Hang on. No wonder they were discouraged and depressed. Because even the knowledge that they had was imprecise. And they, they went on to say, like, Jesus, things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, they did recognize that he was mighty in deed. So they saw the miracles, mighty in word before God and all the people. And we were hoping that he was the one that was going to redeem Israel. And then all these things happened. So they had this knowledge. They heard about Jesus, but they put Jesus in a category, a wrong classification where you know don't you know about this Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet he's not a prophet he's the son of the living God 
He's God himself in the flesh. And when we really press into not understanding that with our head, but we see that in our spirit, I truly believe that our hearts will catch a fresh fire from heaven. And however, whatever state you are in right now, whatever situation you're in right now, whatever challenge you're in right now, whatever lack you're in right now, the reality is when you recognize that Jesus was not just a prophet, he was not just a rabbi, he was not just a great teacher of the word, he was not just a good person, he was not just a moral philosopher. No, 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 no. He is the son of the living God. That can't exist in the realm of hate knowledge. It needs to be heart knowledge. There's a sermon you can find, you know, from Pastor Prince some years back. It's called Hate Knowledge versus Heart Knowledge. Do you know the Lord in your head? Or do you know the Lord in your heart? So however long I've been in the house, however long I've heard Pastor Prince preach, however long I've heard about this person of Jesus, I would like my heart every Sunday when I tune into church, every Sunday when you tune into GRC online, Every Sunday, you go to your local church, people who are attending New Creation Church, GRC Dallas, Fort Worth, like come not with a spirit of like, I'm here to pursue more knowledge. I'm here to pursue more answers to my situation. All that's great, but there's so much more, my friend. Come in pursuit of to see Jesus. Come in pursuit, ready with your heart, open to catch a fire, not a feeling, a fire from heaven. Because you know what? When when Peter heard about the death of Jesus at the cross, Peter says, I'm going fishing. But when the same Peter encountered the resurrected Christ, you see, his death is essential. At the cross, his death is essential for the forgiveness of all our sins, all our mistakes, everything. Like, like Jesus took our place. The, the punishment that we deserve, Jesus took upon. Right? So his death is so essential. Right, We meditate on that, we partake of the Holy Communion. But we have to put a great emphasis on His death and resurrection. That's the fire. His death and resurrection is incomplete to just talk about His death at the cross without meditating on His resurrection. Because Paul says in Corinthians that if the Lord is not risen, our faith is futile and we're still in our sins. So He paid for our sins, but the confirmation that our sins are fully paid for is his resurrection. So when Peter heard about his death, he went away. He went away fishing. He says, I'm, I'm going fishing. But when he encountered the resurrected Christ, and then he waited in Jerusalem, went into the upper room with the 120, the fire from heaven descended upon them. Now this is power. Right? It converted a lowly, fearful fisherman into a mighty evangelist. When he caught this fire from heaven, when his heart began to burn and there was supernatural power from the Holy Spirit, the same person that went away, went back to a normal, ordinary life of fishing, now with the power that's from heaven, the fire that's from heaven, stood up on the day of Pentecost in the power of the resurrected Christ. Right? Death, burial, resurrection. That's the full gospel, right? Right? In the power of the resurrected Christ, stood up, preached the gospel, with an anointing so strong, great message, but it was the anointing. It was the power of the gospel that when he stood up on the day of Pentecost, what was one a fearful, once a fearful fisherman, now became a mighty evangelist with an anointing from heaven, his heart ablaze with fire, not just hate knowledge, but a heart bursting with flames from the Holy Spirit. Not a flame that consumes, that burns you out, but a flame that ignites a fresh faith, a faith that isn't futile. He stood up on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people were saved and born again. So the fire that was in Peter's heart, he received it in the upper room. He caught it. Did not our hearts burn? Spoken by the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Peter caught it in the upper room. His heart was ablaze. But as he spoke, this fire, my friend, is transferable. As Peter spoke with an authority not of his own, with an intellect and an intelligence not of his own. And people were convicted in their spirit. The Lord anointed his words. The Lord gave weight and the words came out like fire. It touched their hearts such that 3,000 people raised up their hands and say like, I want this Jesus that you talk, you're you talking about. That's the power that we're after. This is not fun and games. We're not just like here to create content 
talk about Pastor Prince's book and, and, and all of that. It's so much more. Pastor Prince's heart is that we see Jesus. And when you see Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection, that you will receive transformation in the very situation that you're dealing with right now. Because you know what? It's not, it's not enough that Jesus is just useful to you. It is important to you that Jesus is beautiful. Yeah. Not just useful, but beautiful. Mm. That's why I love the mission and vision of our church, which is birthed from Pastor Prince's heart. That our vision is to see Jesus in all his loveliness, in all his beauty, to understand the perfection of his work at the cross and then catch that fire and make him known by the preaching of the gospel, which is what we're doing. Amen? It is not important. I love the way Pastor Prince says it, right? He says that Jesus is not a means to an end. Think about the words, right? What the disciples said. Oh, I, I, I thought that this prophet would be the one to redeem Israel. So the disappointment stem from an, an outcome that they were hoping for. That Jesus was this vessel that will be an, a means to an end right? No, Jesus can't just be useful. He needs to be beautiful. He can't just be a means to an end. He is the end. He's not like, oh, I need provision. So let's be reading the Bible more. Oh, I, I need this healing situation. Hmm. Let, let's, let's be, be, you know, going to church more. Like, you know, I, I need to, like, it's like, there's a lot of desire for us to be healed. 100%. There's a lot of desires for us to be provided for. 100%. There's a lot of desire for us to have a blessed marriage, a good life. 1000%. But He's not the means to an end. He is the end. He is the living God. He is fire. He's fire in our hearts. So I've been in this house for 28 years. But when I come to church, before I come to church on every Sunday, like I want to come not with familiarity. I want to come with a heart receptive and open so that my heart can, can catch a fire from heaven to be reunited. Because I don't know about you, but living in this world sometimes, you know, with all the sadness, the news, the calamities, the destruction, the pain and the suffering that you see, like somehow, sometimes, right? Like when you lose sight of Jesus and you tune your eyes away from Jesus, there are times where your heart can grow cold. There, your, there are times where your heart can grow discouraged. There, your, there are times where your head, rather than being lifted up, can be cast down can be crushed, your spirit, your soul, your emotions. So many people in the world today are dealing with all kinds of weird mental attacks in their mind, feeling discouragement, feeling depression, feeling suicidal, and, and not just feeling because the, the, they follow the, the leading of their feelings rather than follow the leading of their shepherd. And the pain of following the, the, how you're, you're feeling is that it leads you to places of destruction, people start cutting themselves, they start hurting themselves, they start, you know, consuming more than they co should consume, they start buying things that more than, you know, living beyond their means. Like all these are just symptoms of a heart that is not ignited with a revelation that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is King and Jesus is Chief Shepherd and Jesus is watching over you. I don't want to live this way, neither do I desire for you to live this way. It's not enough that we have this knowledge of Christ but I pray that today our hearts are ignited afresh. That's why we gather. We're not gathering so that we can have a gathering. Right? We're not gathering because it's, you know, a good Christian thing to do. Right? I hope you're not tuning into this because, you know, it's the right Christian thing to do. No, that you're tuning this to this because you want to gather around like-minded believers, right? To let your hearts be aflame to touch a real power from heaven where all human answers end and fail, that's where we touch God's answers. He is then our shalom. He is then our solution. He is then our peace. He is then our salvation. Right? Nothing else matters. So I close off with this, with David saying this, right? He says this in Psalms 27, verse 4. He says, One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me and he shall set me upon a rock. He shall set me high 
upon a rock. I pray that this becomes our one thing. To desire the Lord, not knowledge, not content. Worst of all, imprecise knowledge, where the Lord is just reduced to be like a prophet. Oh, my friend, he's so much more. So much more. Right? And it's why it's so important that we gather as a community of faith, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to do what? To acquire more knowledge, to acquire more wisdom, right? To figure out how to, you know, make more money, how to deploy our capital. No, 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 no. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And I promise you, right? If we make that our heart's endeavor and desire and ambition in your time of trouble, and you may be going through a time of trouble right now, he will hide you. You will find yourself in the secret place, right? One day in his house is better than a thousand elsewhere. There are no answers outside of the person of Jesus, right? Come what may, if Jesus is our fortress, our rock, and our salvation, you will be set on a high place in your time of trouble and adversity. Amen. Amen. So good, Pastor Darren. What a necessary recalibrating fresh word that you just brought and, you know, gave and released to all of us. Um, and I think that's so powerful, just recalibrating, recentering why we do this, why we're gathered right now. And there's people watching all over right now that I, I really believe you probably have found yourself in some of the scenarios in your heart that Pastor Darren was just speaking to and that we've just been discussing. And isn't it amazing that we're not just gathered here right now and we're going to enter into a time of ministry and the Lord's going to move. He is going to move. He is going to do miracles. He is going to bless. But isn't it amazing that it's not just about the blessings. It's about your relationship with the blesser, the relationship that you have, that you get to enjoy with the person of Jesus. You're not going to find any true fulfillment or satisfaction outside of diving deeper into this relationship that the Lord desires to have with you that is absolutely free and undeserved and unearned, freely flowing to you. The Lord's inviting you to that right now. So maybe in this moment right now, as we just consider all the people that are with us right now live, all the people that are tuning in right now from all the different places, you just put in just different things that you want to throw out there in this community of faith, of like-minded believers, where we are putting at the center right now the loveliness of Jesus, the beautiful aspects of his person, what he accomplished through his death, burial, and resurrection. And let's bring these things to him right now and let these things be confronted by his beauty, be confronted by the work at the cross and the fact that he was raised not for your justification, because of your justification. So let's do that right now. I wanna just enter into a time of worship. Maybe we just pray in the spirit. If you pray in the spirit, we just want to encourage you to do that right now. Just, just take some time to pray in the Spirit. Lindsay's going to kick us off and then Deacon is Jess. And we're just going to go into whatever the Lord leads us to pray. And if you don't pray in the Spirit, we're going to believe even right now that as we do, that the Holy Spirit is igniting your heart and there's a flame of fire just like they experienced in the upper room. So thank you, Lord. Right now, shu taraba kandara basandai. Soka tataraba basiti andere bekiti andara basete. Sora bakati and dorobo soki and diri bisiti asa katarabasando robo kotai. Sora bakata tatarabasandai. I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for um, just people that maybe have felt like they are far from you, Lord, that they feel like um, they haven't really spent time with you or known you in the way that they should, Lord, that you are comforting their hearts and that you are calming their minds right now, Lord. And I just thank you that you would reassure them that even in the times that they have felt far, that you have been close to them. Yeah. And I thank you, Lord, that you are just, um, just like Pastor Darren was speaking of, just reigniting yeah. their hearts, Lord, that there would be a fresh fire within them, that they would just desire to be with you, Lord, just because of how beautiful you mm. are. So we thank you, Lord, for everyone that um, 
has that desire to be close to you, Lord, that they would be so aware of how near you are and how loved they are. And I just thank you, Lord, that um, anyone dealing with mind games, that they are not enough, that um, the world might be better off without them in it, Lord, that you would just capture their hearts as well, that you would remind them um, just how beautiful that they are, that you have purpose for them to be here, Lord, and that you would just reassure them that they're supposed to be here on this earth, that they are called to be the salt and the light, Lord, that you would just comfort hearts and just put minds at ease, Lord. And even what Charlie had put in the chat earlier, that your name is ointment poured out, Lord, that you would just flood each heart and calm each mind in Jesus' name. There may be people here who just feel like you're so caught up, caught up in your past, past sins, past trauma, that you had been not well treated, and you're just so stuck. And even though you have the Lord Jesus, you just cannot forget. The Lord just wants all that to be put away, to see that it's all paid for at the cross. And the Lord wants you to be free, to receive His love freely, because it costs Him everything to love us. And the Lord wants you to know that because of His beauty, His finished work at the cross, you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ, having received Him as your Lord and Saviour. You are no more abandoned. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things, all things have passed away and all things have become new. And the Lord wants to do a new thing in you, in your life and in the people around you. If you would only just receive that righteousness from Him, that abundance of His grace, and the gift of His righteousness, that you will be set free from the past that is so painful and hurtful, that is so dark, yet you never seem to be able to walk out of it and are always walking back into it. This evening, the Lord says that He set you free. You are free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Not to go back again, but to walk in the newness of life and of His Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and worship you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to encourage those of you that are with us right now just to take this moment and just create space to just behold the Lord. Just close your eyes even right now and focus your attention on how much He really loves you. What He did to give you a relationship with Himself on the basis of you not having to behave perfectly. You can approach Him no matter what it is that you're struggling with right now, no matter what it is that you're questioning right now. He wants to hear your questions so you can hear His answers. And His answers are not going to satisfy your intellect or your head. His answers are going to seep deep into your heart and result in a heart that is ignited after what his heart is after. A man and a woman after God's own heart. I believe in this session, this time, I just want to speak over people right now who just want to receive this right now. Um, A man and a woman after God's own heart. That can be received by faith right now. And Lord, I just ask for a special impartation right now to every person who is pairing their amen with what we're speaking, and they're just personalizing 
this introduction, this reintroduction to who you are, Lord Jesus. And I ask that there would be a special new beginning and a special reintroduction to grace. And not just the message of grace, the person of grace. I just feel to share this with someone that in order for you to see more of the loveliness of Jesus, the Bible says also taste and see that the Lord is good. You've been trying to see more of the Lord's goodness by accumulating head knowledge, but you have felt bloated and empty and not fulfilled. And I just speak right now over you, whoever you might be, wherever you are, that the Lord sees you, he loves you, and he's getting your attention even in this moment. He's called you by name and he has set you apart, not set you aside for a special relationship with himself that he paid to give you. So Lord, I speak that right now over people that are watching that desire, a reintroduction to your person, a reintroduction to your story, a reintroduction to the gospel, Lord. And I thank that you would use this book club and pastor's ministry to bring them on their own personal road to Emmaus experience where they go from discouragement to great encouragement in Jesus name. So we speak right now over every person that may be feeling that, that they're catching a vision fueled and empowered by the Holy Spirit of their relationship with Jesus. I really believe that in this moment, the way you approach Jesus is being revolutionized and changing right now, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. In Jesus name, we thank you, Lord. We just pray for people who may be tuning in today and if not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name right now, just lift up your hands. Wherever you're watching this, wherever you're tuning in from, in Jesus' name, we baptize you in the power of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and praying in the Spirit. Wherever you're tuning in right now, just in the presence of fellow believers, begin to pray and speak in tongues and in the Spirit. Even if what you have right now is just a few syllabus, we're going to join you right now together and we're just going to pray together in the Spirit for a moment. And this is so vital and so important to your spiritual life and spiritual journey because the things of the Spirit you cannot comprehend with the natural mind. The Word of God, the living Word of Truth, it's not something that you can consume with your head. We all need the power of the Holy Spirit to comprehend and understand the incomprehensible, to understand that we are not dealing with the visible realm, but we're dealing with the invisible realm. We're not dealing with the natural. How can sickness and disease be healed by the laying on of hands? That's not natural. That's supernatural. When it comes to faith, we need to step in and press into understanding the scriptures because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Lord told the disciples, don't rush out of Jer Jerusalem. Spend time waiting in the upper room. Spend time sitting in the upper room. When you're sitting in the upper room, wait for the moment for the Holy Spirit to descend with power sound like a mighty rushing wind coming in with flames from fire descending upon them and they began all to pray in a heavenly language you can't use your natural mind to understand what you're praying because it is a spiritual gift praying in tongues is a spiritual gift and sometimes you can have mind games to go like hey i'm making this up i don't really understand what i'm saying i'm telling you this by faith it is in the word of god have faith not in the words of men but in the word of god Paul says that when I pray in the Spirit, I comprehend not what I speak, but my Spirit prays and, and I'm speaking wonders and mysteries to heaven. So even when we pray and it seems like our mind is unfruitful, we don't understand what we're saying, but I can tell you there's spiritual orchestration by the power of the Holy Spirit to, to break out the things, the wrong believing, the negative emotions, the past traumas, all the things that cannot be managed by by natural means natural weapons oh when the power of the holy spirit comes in it comes in 
with such great velocity and strength and power that it will overwhelm everything that is natural that is against you today. So when endowed with this spiritual gift, can I encourage you? Paul says like, you know, I pray in, in the spirit more than you all, right? If there's one thing to boast about, Paul boasts about his abundance of praying in the spirit. Oh, and the Lord filled him with such great insight and revelation that we cannot understand with our head, but what we've been talking about with our heart. But that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit to lay hold of that Jesus was not just a prophet, but he is God. So to understand the incomprehensible through the finiteness of our intellect, the limitedness of our intelligence, that we put no confidence in our own knowledge because all that knowledge does the bible tells us is all worldly knowledge does is it puffs you up and makes us proud but when you pray in a heavenly language that you do not understand the converse occurs it brings forth a humility and a lowliness like lord i don't understand but i pray by faith i pray that as i pray in the spirit you are speaking into my destiny you're speaking into my calling you're speaking into my future you're causing doors that are close to be open that no man can shut, that you can open doors in my life that no man can shut, and you can give me the wisdom and the guidance to choose the right paths to walk into, to choose the right corridors to walk down, to choose the right relationships, to choose the right voices in our life. Not just the loudest voices, not just the most influential voices, but the voices that you have sent to speak life and truth and promise and favor and increase and shalom into our hearts, Lord. So that's our prayer today. We do not want to leave your presence without an infilling and power from on high, the power of the Holy Spirit. So that we can recognize without you, we can do nothing. So pray in the Spirit right now. Let the Spirit of the Lord fan the revival flames in your heart. That you move from a place of hate knowledge to heart revelation in Jesus' name. In places that you've grown cold in, the Lord is restoring and reviving. I speak revival to your heart right now. I break the power of familiarity in your heart right now in Jesus' name. Every adversity that you're dealing with, every sickness, every disease, every harm, every negative emotion, in Jesus' name, as you pray in the Spirit, oh, the Spirit and the power of God that is in you comes forth like a flood, come forth like a mighty wind, comes forth with a fresh fire to flush out all the things that is causing you to live and feel like you're in defeat, even though you're not. Because in Christ Jesus, you have been made greater and more than a conqueror in Christ. So as you pray in the Spirit, the Spirit of truth comes in and it takes away all the lies that the enemy has planted, all the lies that we receive from all the media that we've consumed. It flushes us out. It builds our house. The Bible says edify, it edifies us. It builds us from the inside out in Jesus' name. That's our prayer for you today. In Jesus' name, that as you participate in the power of the Holy Spirit, even as you read Destined to Reign afresh, Read it with the power of the Holy Spirit. Read the Bible and the Word of God, not with natural eyes, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. And you will experience a breakthrough, a transformation, a igniting of fire in your heart that you've never experienced before or never experienced in a long time. You've heard of past revivals, but it's great we celebrate that, but we are talking about the present revival in your heart, in Jesus' name. And I speak that forth by faith that today, wherever you're listening to this, marks a new day of the Lord reviving, bringing new fire from heaven into your heart right now in Jesus' name. That somehow by the power of the Holy Spirit, you see Jesus with fresh eyes, not a prophet, but a son of the living God who died for your sins and rose it's a confirmation that all your sins are forgiven and you have a bright future, a great life ahead of you. Whatever present circumstances may seem, they may seem adverse. Oh, that's not the truth. Your future is bright. Your best days are not behind you. They are in front of you. Your greatest accomplishments are not behind you. They are in front of you. 
in Jesus' name. We depend on the anointing of the Holy Spirit to destroy every yoke of bondage, every wrong belief, every addiction, every fear, every doubt. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just give a moment to celebrate and praise the Lord for everything that we believe He's doing right now and is going to continue to do? What an amazing time that we've all had. Uh, I think it really was a road to Emmaus. It's going back to you, Deaconess Jess. <laughs> a road to Emmaus <laughs> experience and a and a revival, I believe. I really do believe that when Pastor Darren was speaking that, that the Lord was um, just promoting that, that there's a relationship revival happening in the hearts of people um, right now. And I mean, that brings us great joy. We, could you guys uh, let us know what's happening? We'd love to hear from you. We wanna hear from you on our website. We wanna hear from you um, in all the different spaces that you're connected with this ministry, whether it's uh, GRC Online, some area of Joseph Prince Ministries, whatever it might be, however you can get in contact with us, would you let us know what the Lord's doing? Because um, it brings great encouragement to us and to others um, to really you know, pay attention to and focus on the goodness of the Lord in the hearts of His people and in the lives of all the ones that are represented right now. We wanna hear from you. We'd love to just experience together how this session has impacted you and again we'd love for you to continue to enjoy all the book club episodes and you can do that by going to youtube going to that playlist enjoying it at your own pace if you feel like oh man i haven't even i haven't even caught up you could do it at your own pace from the first book club episode to the one that we are in right now we want to encourage you to be prepared for the next one and the next one is going to be the last one for Destined to Reign, which is going to be chapters 19 to 22. So go to our website also and download all the study notes. I think that that would be really helpful for you to continue to uh, meditate on what the Lord is emphasizing, what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Pastor Darren, you have any last thoughts or words you want to share? I'm good, Josh. I'm just excited to see everyone and... You know, I, I preach myself happy. <laughs> that, that is, the Pastor Prince says, if I didn't do anything else but preach myself happy, I'm happy. Amen. <laughs> so I'm happy that you're happy. And um, <laughs> I'm, happy. I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> I'm happy that you're happy, Deacon and Jess. And Lindsay and all of you, uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in all the different spaces that we're connected with you in. And please stay tuned for the next Destined Terrain book club. We can't wait to see you there. Chapters 19 to 22. We love you. God bless you. See you again soon. And if you reign, your addictions don't. If you reign, your sins don't. If you reign, death doesn't. If you reign, no power of darkness, amen, can have the victory over your life because you are reigning. Even if you have read Destined to Reign before, can I encourage you to get hold of this 15th anniversary edition and receive these life-changing truths afresh? This special edition includes some new material, some of my reflections, personal notes, and new meditations as I read Destined to Reign again. There are also some additional content like teaching clips and specially selected video testimonies to encourage you and help you get the most out of the book. And if you know a friend or loved one who needs to hear the gospel of grace, please consider sending them a copy of this book as well. God bless you.